I can't think of a better job in the world than what I'm doing. Um, I truly believe that basic science in both in humans, and I can't also express from my own, the animal model studies are going to be uh, the key to our continued advances and applications in clinical practice and medicines. And through scientific inquiry, biology sometimes reveals its fundamental principles. And for me, when I think of uh, early flavor learning, I am in awe of its elegance and its simplicity. For the mother, for the baby to learn of the flavors, the mother has to eat the food in order to have the effect. I think it's a fundamental feature of all mammals that starts in the beginning. And when we, the, the, the thinking about these senses that combine, that give us flavor, when we think about the emotional potency of these flavor evoked memories, those that take us to our past. I mean, we're omnivores, we can all learn to like new foods. But it is these foods that we experience in our childhood that bring us to our past. Uh, and that is because of these emotional, potent, uh, flavor-evoked memories. The reward systems that are seeking us out to uh, seek out pleasure, they all originate early in life, and they have their origins in uh, gestation and then breastfeeding, and then they continue throughout the lifespan. Uh, through, in childhood, we learn our rules of cuisine, when to eat, how to eat, what to eat. In some cases, what individuals eat what foods. It's a very complicated learning that uh, begins early on. And if I would think of the application of this knowledge and knowing about this plasticity of childhood, I would argue that anyone who makes a product for a child because we now have specially prepared foods for children, uh, that it's no longer that the child is eating the foods of the table when they're weaned from the mother's breast or formula. And anyone who makes a product for a child, it is not just a source of calories. It is, uh, gives information about who we are as a people, and it, uh, it, it, the senses are these foods should be bridging something. They're not just to attract a child to eat a lot of a product. They are serving the child to get to the next stage. Uh, I would also hope that just by an appreciation of learning how children learn, and I know whether it's for obesity or just to, for health benefits of eating fruits and vegetables, that there's an appreciation that all children are all uh, have access to not only fruits and vegetables, but good tasting fruits and vegetables from an early age. Uh, if there is any hope, and it's very difficult, as I said, to change dietary habits, and I think one can understand why, but if there is any hope on how we're going to change, I think this is where it belongs. And that is that there probably is no bigger motivator to change than that which occurs during pregnancy and lactation and early motherhood. Uh, these are a time when women often seek dietary advice, and when one thinks that she can be the vehicle, um, that perhaps this may be the time of not only for her to learn to like these foods, but she has the potential to influence probably the food habits of the entire family. It's, it, what she eats is most likely going to reflect the father, the whole family, and it's to bridge the child to accept these foods later on. So just for love of family, for love of science, and love of country, I'll leave you with these words. What is patriotism but the love of good foods we ate in our childhood? Thank you. <laughs>